Hi Nick, hi Alyssa, and welcome everyone else as well to another episode of Smash JT where we're going to be covering the fallout of SmashJT.com coming back online, much to the chagrin of these people that tried to take it down because the evil words of showing them their public profile pictures and their public statements that they've made for all to see and having them listed in a place for people to be able to reference it and remember it. Yeah, they wanted to make sure they took that site down because it's targeted harassment? What, holding people accountable for what they said? I guess you could say every YouTube video I've ever made is targeted harassment then because all I do is talk about what people say. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do with this video too. This is going to be the copium and seething episode, the fallout of SmashJT.com coming back online, talking about the tweets after false flagging my website on a holiday weekend and thinking that they accomplished something legal and did the right thing. When all they did was what they always do. Go out of bounds and do whatever necessary to silence opposition and make sure their word is the only one heard. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down the coping and seething fallout from SmashJT.com and Kotaku Detected going back up online after being down for just over 24 hours. These people thought they had a massive win trying to destroy free speech, but thankfully, logic has prevailed and once again proven that these people just want to make sure everyone is silenced and they don't want their own words being used against them. In fact, Alyssa even started off with saying, defamation is a thing, you know? Defamation like showing tweets of what you said against certain individuals or people out there or game opinions or how you've left information out of articles to push a narrative? That kind of defamation? Are you are you going to sue yourself? Like, what an odd take. But this is just the beginning of the coping and seething. The fallout on social media has been nothing short of spectacular, with their tweets offering a blend of denial and desperate attempts to control the narrative that has all but slipped away from their grasp once again. First off, let's begin with Alyssa, how she was a tad preemptive dancing on the grave of SmashJT.com with her tweet, Oop! Website not detected! Huge shout out to Nick Calandra, who reached out to Wix about this site and consistently followed up. Clearly, they agree that he was engaging in targeted harassment, among other things. No, clearly it was a holiday weekend, and they got a massive false flag attempt from tons of people, and they had an auto-trigger that shut it down because they're like, we don't even know what's going on right now, everyone's just mass reporting this website. I don't know how you could look at that and be like, that's a win, we did the right thing, and Wix saw it our way, when they're literally just doing the exact steps they do anytime a false flag attempt happens on a website. This is a great precedent, a great sign that there are people and places on the internet who know targeted harassment and cyberbullying when they see it. I mean, literally, the way you act and the way you talk about me, Alyssa, some could look at that and say, you're actually cyberbullying me and have been for a very long time. I guess the difference is, I don't cry about it online like you do all the time. The swift reinstatement of SmashJT.com ironically proved the baseless natures of her claims, yet she persists in her attempts to portray herself as the moral victor, something that she seemingly has made a habit of for some time now. Now, I have her blocked and she has me blocked, but that doesn't mean I don't see what she says because... We have a lot of the same mutual followers and people that share stuff like it's the internet. <laughs> you put it out there. I don't I don't know how you don't understand this being a journalist or an activist, but you put it out there. People see it, people share it, people talk about it. It's fair game. It's out there. And these things are getting screen capped and shown. So even if I have you blocked, I still see them on my feed and still laugh at them. I still laugh at you. After smashjt.com got reinstated, she said you can keep your website. It helps me with a wild face. It's like, really? That's that's like so childish. Like, uh, you took the L so hard that you have no words. You don't even know what to say, but you're trying. So you, you just cobble together these letters together and you're just like, I need to take the stance of 
talking down to people because I'm the voice of reason. People look to me for answers and direction. So I'm going to tell them how to think. And I'm going to push this narrative because that's all you do as an activist, push narratives. I'm going to push this narrative that I know it's in the best interest for everyone and say, you can keep your website. It helps me. Sure, because the day before you were dancing on the grave of it. You, you apparently didn't want the help. And I guess you're welcome for helping you. I can't make sense of your logic. What what the hell are you trying to say here? I guess she realized she looked stupid, so she decided to keep tweeting. If you think you have any right to hold anyone accountable when you promote transphobia, racism, sexism, and more, you're delulu. So apparently she's saying, I am not in a position of power, and I am not allowed to make any rules, and I am not allowed to hold anyone accountable because she's the only one that's allowed to do that, or people that agree and believe in her narratives are allowed to do that. But because I have a website that is holding these people accountable, she doesn't like that. She's very angry that Kotaku Detected exists because it holds her and her colleagues accountable for what they've said publicly, their actions they've taken, the words that they've wrote, everything that's out there for the public to see, and they can't take it. They can't stand that there's a mirror out there showing exactly what they did, reminding everyone, just in case they thought they forgot, because there's just so many people to try to keep track of, that people were like, forgetting. Like, that was the whole point of creating Kotaku Detected in the first place, was to hold people accountable and not forget about it. Not let these people get away with it. And every time you say that, it's like, oh, you're trying to incite violence, not letting me get away with it? What are you going to do to me? I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to show people exactly who you are. That way you can't push your narrative further. And when you do, people will say, oh, that's the type of person they are. And she followed that up with, I count these nuts. Real professional. From a senior editor at Kotaku, account these nuts. Got it. Definitely no coping or seething right there. Definitely not, oh my god, I need my copium. <sighs> Alyssa speaks from a place of perceived intellectual authority, attempting to frame her loss somehow as a strategic win in the bigger picture. And then we have people like Nick, who said, I'm not spending another week tweeting about this baloney. I have actual work to do. <laughs> I will be actively working to take this list down this week. Once again, I suggest you do the same. I'm done messing around with these guys. Okay, so actual work to do was to not do work, but to false flag my website and take it down because it flew in the face of your narrative and your friend's narrative. Gotcha, Nick. How'd that work out for you? These guys will never stop doing this unless you go after their funding sources. If you follow me and see what's happening here, I'm asking you to help me stop this before someone gets hurt. Not making jokes about it, not dunk on them. It needs to be reported. Needs to be. The, the website needs to be taken down. It needs to be reported. Go after their funding sources. That almost sounds like going after someone's job, going after their Patreon, going after YouTube, trying to get them canceled any way possible. Do you not hear what you're saying and how delusional that line of thinking is? How can you look at that and think that that's okay and then go back over to Second Wind and then start getting people donating thousands of dollars to you every month and think that you're in the right because your mantra, your narrative, your agenda is the only thing that's okay. And everything else needs to be canceled. These guys think they get a win and they go right back to hosting defamation on their websites, lol. So apparently Nick hasn't learned anything. He's already saying that nothing was learned here, nothing has changed, just the wrong thing happened and now they have to live with it. Instead of realizing that he campaigned a massive false flag event to try to take smashjt.com down, successfully took it down, I might add, incorrectly, illegally, without right reasoning or rationale. This is something that I could probably go after you as if I wanted to and get a lawyer suit up and actually go after you. But in Nick's eyes, that kind of stuff only goes one way. But he continues, nothing to cope and seethe about when they still look at stupid as they did at stupid as, come on, Nick, come on. If you're going to try to make fun of someone and try to take the high ground and say that you're not coping and seething, don't randomly write a tweet in anger and frustration and misspell words to make you look even dumber, okay? 
<laughs> this is just funny. Nothing to cope and seethe about when they still look at stupid as they did 24 hours ago, sharing the same defamatory statements that I'm taking legal action on. Like, here's the thing, Nick. You keep threatening taking legal action on people. For what, dude? Like, what are you even going to do? I could only imagine a lawyer that's just not funneling money away from you and pretending you have a case that would not just laugh you out of the room. You have nothing. Like, this is all public information. People are allowed to comment on things publicly. This has been proven in many lawsuits over time, time and time again. And if you want to retest that theory, have at it. But you're going to waste a whole lot of money and look really stupid even more so than you already do right now. Your career is currently spiraling down the drain. And people like me are laughing at you and at the same time saying, bro, stop it. Like, stop being like this and fix yourself. Instead of trying to take it out on other people and blame them for your wrongdoings, take control of the situation yourself. Take control of your life. Put it back on the rails and forget about everything else. But you can't do that because you got an agenda and narrative you got to push. Clearly, it's taken over your mind. Their initial reactions to the takedown and their responses to the reinstatement are oh so satisfying. These cry bullies are losers who only care to have their voices heard and will do anything, even go so far as to go out of bounds and take the law into their own hands to get the result they desire. Ergo, look at what Alyssa did when she looked up my wife's private information and DM'd her completely out of bounds. But to her, she justified it. For whatever reason, her agenda, the narrative, the for the greater good, the end justifies the means, it's okay because I'm Alyssa Mercante, I'm allowed to contact your wife. No, you're not, and you're seeing the repercussions for that right now. And then we have Nick thinking that his actions are justified in false flagging my website because he doesn't like the public information I have shared on there and make note of and remember by showing them in an area that reminds people of some of the things they've said so that people know exactly the type of stuff that they stand for. Nick said, it's hard to take it seriously when Smash goes on a stream and says, I didn't even research why I put him on there in the first place, end quote. And to think there's any sort of reason to take him seriously, LOL. Okay, before I go on on that, there was a live stream where I talked to my audience and I said, yeah, I had a conversation with Nick. I don't know why he's even saying I said it on a live stream. I said this to you in an email privately to Nick where I told you, hey, I didn't do the full research on this. I trusted people that you told me I should not have trusted. <laughs> looking back on it, I was trusting the very right people that I should have been trusting because they were absolutely spot on about you. But you don't want to even hear that because it makes you look like a despicable human being for the public to see. And that's why you don't like to have your face on this Kotaku Detected page. But he continues, dude gloated about 2,500 views on his website. Just shared what a failure it is. Make up your mind. Is it a failure? Or is it success? Because I'd argue if SmashJT.com is such a failure, then why are you organizing your fan base to do a massive false flag attempt takedown of my website if it's meaningless and a failure and not getting attention? I'd almost go so far to say is that proves you being a complete hypocrite and liar in the same mention right here. 2,500 views on a website is incredible. I wonder if that's more than Kotaku gets some days. Like, that's as bad as the situation's become. SmashJT.com used to get maybe one or two views on stories, and I would write them tirelessly, day in and day out for years, and barely anyone would pay attention to them until this story happened, and it blew it up. And you know deep down that burns you because it gives me attention and it takes eyeballs away from you. And at the end of the day, that's exactly why you're so scared right now. Because the truth is coming out and it makes you look horrible. And that's not all though. There were more. The legion of their fans. Kate Bush's husband who always, these people always, from what I've seen, seem to daily be in the replies of what feels like everything that's said especially by Alyssa Mercante, but even Nick at this point too. Kate Bush's husband said, his site is back up, but he hasn't taken down the petition. Dude was so shook, he lost, check notes, a page with links to his low effort YouTube videos and poorly written articles, LOL. I got one thing to say to that, Kate Bush's husband, cope harder. You are cold.
coping, coping and seeding. You just can't accept what you're seeing. If you think my website sucks so much, then why do you even care about it? If you think my videos suck so much, then why do you even mention them? The fact is, you know people are watching them, and it burns you. It irks you to the nth degree. There is nothing you can do about it except cope and seethe. And then we got tough guy himself, John Phipps. Dude thinks about you more than he does his wife. Coming from a guy that is in the mentions of Alyssa Mercante and replies on what feels like every single tweet she makes. Dude, log off the internet. If you have a wife, spend some time with her. And if you don't, go find one. But holy crap, talking about someone else's, I don't even know where to start with that one. You guys always go to that kind of stuff too. You always jump right to the family stuff. It's so strange. It's like when you don't have an argument, you don't have a case, you always just kind of be like, oh, why don't you go spend time with your family? Why don't you uh, not make videos or articles? Go go, go spend time with your family. That way no one can uh, find out about how awful we are. Yeah, go go, go spend time with them. That's what this is turning into. And it's, it's obvious. Like, it's, it's hysterical. It's absolutely hysterical. In the end, this saga serves as a reminder of the power of the community and the importance of vigilance against false flag attacks. While it remains to be seen what, if any, actions are going to be taken against Nick Calandra, co-founder and content director at Second Wind, the community will judge with their support. And based off of how he's acting right now, that means more than anything he could ever imagine. He is not taking any accountability, responsibility, and if anything, just like with Alyssa Mercante and all these types of people, they never accept it. They always have to keep doubling down, tightening their stance, fighting back harder, instead of just being like, oh man, I learned something here. Maybe I shouldn't be a dick. Maybe I shouldn't do these kind of things to other people. Maybe what they're doing does have a point. Maybe what they're doing is trying to better the game industry. Maybe I should just stay in my lane and keep doing what I was doing that made me successful. Because at the end of the day, if we focus on the games and what makes them great, I think that would make everyone a whole lot happier. Before I end this video, I just wanted to say, I know I did the live stream the other day thanking you guys, but thank you. Like, I wanted to put it in a video. Thank you guys so much for the support, the incredible support over the past week like it's been insane i've been doing youtube for like seven and a half years or so i don't even know it's been a long time and never in my entire career have i ever had a week or two of such emotional roller coaster uh stress exhaustion losing sleep but ultimately support and winning and i guess at the end of the day it was all worth it, but it was exhausting. And I wouldn't have been able to get through it without you guys. So from me to you genuinely, thank you so much for the support. I'm gonna leave it there. If you want more information, you can check smashjt.com, which is still up as I speak right now. The article that I referenced in this video will be linked in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Smash, J, J, Smash, J, J.